there's something that sets us apart from the rest of humanity. There's a signature. If we were to reveal it, we'd say it's the secret signature, the signature of blood. The blood follows us throughout the journey of our life, whether it's with us or no longer there. Patriarchy has repressed and suppressed our mysteries. all of us on the inside and that unites us in our blood. I think that women don't necessarily want to acknowledge their own bloody existence. And I have met women that have said, oh, I just can't stand the sight of blood. And I, I am in a conundrum. I think to myself, well, how? How do they go through month to month if they cannot stand the sight of blood? It is a part of who we are as women. We have no choice but to deal with that blood. It's in every day. There is a shift going on now where women are reframing collectively their experience of menstruation. And I think that the whole issue is very tied up, in my opinion, with environmentalism. Because when a woman honors her menstruation, she honors the natural cycle in her body. She honors her connection to the moon and to the earth and she feels a part of nature. She is in touch with the wild and eternal part of herself that has always, always, always been part of a woman's experience. So the blood was a wonderful, mysterious substance that gave life to humans and to plants and to the earth itself. Most ancient people saw blood as being the main symbol of life, and so therefore a woman's menstrual blood was seen as very magical and important, and it was revered and it was used in ceremony. And when her mother was trying to give her information, she says, oh, that's not going to happen to me. That's never going to happen to me. I mean, this child was in such denial. And when it happened, all she could do was just yell and scream and cry. And it was a crisis for her because it's like, what on earth would make her think that out of all the women in the world, she would be the one that would not get the menstrual? So it was definitely a crisis. Oh, I got my period. And she's all, what? You got your what? So I have to say it, and then my brother comes up, and he's all, what? What did she say? What did she say? So it's like everybody's in on it, and my mom immediately, when we got home, was like, we're going to buy some champagne, and we're going to celebrate. And to me, that's like, that's a, I would celebrate when I got menopause, and I didn't have my period anymore, but, you know, I wouldn't celebrate now. I think it's, ugh. I felt this great responsibility. This is my job to make this a blessing. How am I going to do that? And every person who came painted a piece of silk. I was so enthusiastic about her doing something like this. As part of the fire circle, kind of symbolic of what we were doing. Well, we all sat around the fire circle and people gave me little gifts and tokens and they talked to me about the passage and gave me advice. I had a lot of fun. I got a lot of little jewelry boxes, but they all had some kind of meaning, you know? Like some of the jewelry had faces on them of a woman of wisdom. I almost felt more like a woman, I guess you could say. And I accepted it more, you know, that is just a part of, you know, being a woman. She looked different the next day. There was something about her the next day that just, there was a, a kind of air about her. She seemed more, more sure of herself, or more, uh, just taller. I was really struck by it, and it was uh, a kind of a passage for me because it was like I had a, a young daughter who now was a young woman, and it was dramatic. It was really dramatic.
And this is why we, as I like to say, go through the burning door, why we enter that ritual space, is to have some kind of a change of ordinary consciousness. Using really what we've always used, ritual, the arts, these are powerful tools and connected to the imagination, that's where they get their power. I bandaged everything at her heart. Her heart had been broken. All the ways it scarred me. And I, I wrote a song and I took her down to the ocean and I prayed over her and unwrapped the bandages and I buried them in the sand and it was the single most powerful healing experience of my life. You know, it was stitch by stitch telling this story and having it come out differently for me. And then, you know, what I eventually did is I made her this little dress and this is her little tool belt, you know, for getting on in the world. Her little wand, just symbols, you know, you know, being a powerful woman. <laughs>